Hi guys, Sherry here from No Facts Given Crew. How's it going? So this is going to be a twin flame reading for um, June the six, sorry, seventeenth until the twenty seventh. Um, I'm extending it a little bit um, because I'm going to be going on um, a little bit of a, a holiday um, around July the eighth until probably the twentieth. Uh, my older son is getting married, so um, I won't be doing any readings during that time. So if you wanted a private reading, um, now would be a good time to book with me uh, for the next two weeks, because after that I won't uh, be doing any readings. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be using the John Holland for the main energy. And my deck for confirmation. So pull three cards per position. I'm a little stiff today. So I just wanted to thank you guys again for all of the support. You guys are so amazing. The, the, the love that I get is holds me up. It, it gives me strength and confidence and I just love you guys so much. Thank you for everything that you do. Okay, so I think that's good enough. Let's begin. So, beginning with the feminine past position. Lover's card. So, for me, this card represents the passion um, that is shared between two twin flames. It's like the ignition. It's the desire. It's the, um, you know, the, the sexual passion that is ignited between fin, uh, twin flames when, when they meet, when they recognize each other. But it's a longing energy. It's wanting um, to be with your twin, longing on a deep level. Thank you, Guna. <laughs> Love you. Okay. Uh, strength card. Um, Eight of Pentacles and the High Priest. So, if you look at these cards, there's a, a timeline here. So, past, present, and future. But this is in the past position. So, these are past energies that you're bringing into the reading with the lover's card. So, in the distant past position, we have the strength card. So, this is using love um, and gently, um, you know, uh, changing the environment, but in a very gentle, persuasive manner, right? Not using... Um, your will exerted on somebody else in order to, you know, make them change their mind. This is gentle love. It's understanding. It's um, allowing a place where, you know, people can open up and um, talk about how they feel. So it's a, a very safe environment, loving, supportive, safe environment. So that usually means that you know, there was a situation that required your attention, <clears throat> and it's saying that you you handled it in a very loving way. The Eight of Pentacles uh, represents working very hard at something in the 3D. Um, so it's a positive movement forward. It is building up your um, your wealth, your abundance, you know, in the material world, and feeling very grounded in that energy so you feel very successful or you felt very successful so loving peaceful working hard and moving forward and then we have the high priestess how beautiful so the feminine energy has been really tapped into her third eye into her goddess power um, so using your intuition your psychic ability in order to move you um, through the 3D world, your environment, um, and guide you on this path. So definitely see a, a major activation, you know, in terms of the feminine getting in touch with um, their higher self, their intuitive side. So you've been, I see that you've been doing a lot of work, although there is this energy of your longing for that connection with your twin flame. Uh, so let's carry on to the masculine. Okay, past position. Ace of Swords. So a decision was made. 
Uh, this is cutting away darkness, barriers. Uh, it is knowing your truth, communication, uh, but it's triumph and success. So feeling victorious about a decision that you've made. Um, so let's see what he was victorious about. Knight of Swords, Queen of Cups, and Three of Cups. So the Knight of Swords, uh, this represents a forward movement. So we got two sword energy here, which talks about um, communication, mental clarity. Um, but the Knight, is, like I said, is a forward movement. He's a, a champion. He rushes in, um, fights for justice and truth, and then rushes out. So it's a very fast, like I said, movement in and out. Um, so what I feel here is that a decision came in very quickly with the masculine. Um, it's almost, almost like he sat down, spoke his truth, or um, made a decision and moved forward on it very quickly. Uh, so this could represent an air sign. And then we have um, a water sign here, the Queen of Cups, the Queen of Love. Uh, so this could mean that there was communication between the, the Knight and the Queen. Um, and it had to do with, um, you know, opening, um, not only a line of communication, but, um, talking to each other, you know, in this loving way. The Queen of Cups is a very loving, um, open-hearted person. She's also highly intuitive as well. So this is the divine feminine being represented here. All Queens are the, are the feminine. All masculine are the kings. So um, there's a sense that he understands something about uh, this deep connection that he has with the, the feminine. He's moving towards his heart, towards his love. And then the Three of Cups is kind of in the future past position. So there's this union energy. Or I also relate this card with um, the ignition um of the heart chakra, you know, the ignition of love. Uh, so two people coming together and creating third energy, which is love, and having that energy move through you enlightens you, makes you realize that you're connected to something much higher than yourself. So there's this, like I said, a movement towards love, um, a movement towards union, um, and a movement towards truth. And speaking your truth so there was mental clarity and um, a heart chakra opening is what I'm seeing okay the feminine's present position solitude so she's surrendering she's letting go of control she's trying to see things from a different perspective um, but she's still submerged in that water right this card seems to be coming up a lot for the feminine energy so although there's a, a sense of her connected at the crown to to source and you know using her intuition as well um, there's still some emotions that are kind of below the surface that need to be dealt with eight of swords yep queen of swords and queen of wands so the Eight of Swords is um, in the past present position. So this is an energy of being held down, um, being told you're not good enough. Um, you know, um, it's being oppressed by an energy from the outside, um, but you are choosing to believe that you are imprisoned, right? So these are just thoughts in your head. So there's you know it's in the past position so that maybe there's a sense of her coming out of this energy and I'm saying that because of the Queen of Swords uh, this is someone who doesn't take bullshit from anybody this is someone who sees through um, lies manipulation um, and if you come to her in an insincere manner um, she will cut you down she will lay it out um, I call her the Ice Queen there is no emotions attached whatsoever. Um, even though I, you know, she's a queen. All queens have a certain degree of water element associated with them. But I feel that she's just, you know, this cold, um, detached energy. 
which um, released her from this this prison. You know, you need to detach emotionally um, from everything, including thoughts, um, to be in this restful, peaceful state. Okay, surrendering, letting go of control means uh, letting go of emotional connections and thoughts. Uh, in the future position, we're going to have the Queen of Wands, so this could be air, fire. Um, so this is a queen of no fucks given. Okay, you are far too um, involved in your thoughts and emotions. So the queen of fire is someone who detaches from that also. She's the rebel, the leader, very charismatic, uh, the life of the party, very energetic on fire. Um, and fire is spirit energy. So, sh you know, this is stepping into your soul purpose and, um, you know, going from this cold, empty state to this blazing fire, okay? So I definitely see a transition and a, a change in perspective, for sure. Okay, the masculine's present. Three of swords. Uh, so his heart is very heavy. Um, He's very sad and feeling vulnerable. So, you know, this is, the Three of Swords is also thoughts as well. So, you know, it, there's something that is hurting his heart right now. Queen of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, and the Ace of Cups. So the Queen of Pentacles is coming in in kind of a past position. So. Uh, this could represent an earth sign or it represents a connection with um, the divine feminine in the 3D or desire to be with the feminine in 3D. And because he can't be, his heart is bro broken or there's a, you know, that disconnect kind of energy that I'm feeling over here. Um, so the Queen of Pentacles is earthy, grounded. Um, you know, wealthy, independent, um, enjoys um, luxurious things, um, you know, and doesn't have to rely on anybody, but she's also one that shares her wealth, shares her seeds. Um, she's also a mother figure as well, loving. The Knight of Cups represents movement forward with love. Uh, with, you know, romantic gestures and, and courting somebody, wanting to commit to a relationship. Uh, and like I said, again, longing for that, similar to the lover's card. Um, but this is longing to express yourself. And so in the present position, um, you know, there is a lot of love um, that the masculine is feeling for the feminine, for sure. Um, and a desire to want to be with her in the 3D. But like I said, because um, for some it's not happening, there's that heartbreak. Or, you know, this could also mean that the masculine um, is going through a very difficult, dark period of time and, you know, is desiring the feminine to be with him during this time, you know, to... Um, provide that grounding, loving energy. The Ace of Pentacles is coming in the future position. So this is um, the key to that mental prison. Okay, it's a release, but it also represents a brand new beginning in the 3D. So we got two Earth uh, Pentacle 3D energy. Um, so we got like an independent kind of energy here and a new beginning. So um, that this is also kind of an independent energy as well. So this is merging this um, desire to become one in the 3D. Um, but again, this Three of Swords is kind of throwing me off a little bit. So I'm going to pull a card from the Osho Zen. Let's see if there's any additional messages with that. Okay, what further messages do you have for the Three of Swords? 
nine of swords, sorrow. So he's very sad right now about something. So let me read that for you. Okay, so, oh, wait one second, just lost the page. Sorry, okay. So I'm just going to leave it there, but I'll show it to you really quickly here. It's, just, it's a Buddha-ish kind of guy, um, wrapped in a blanket, you know, sitting on the edge of his bed, and um, consumed by anxiety, fear, guilt worry, unable to sleep, nightmares, sorrow. Okay, it says, the image of Ananda, the cousin of disciple of Gautam, Buddha, um, he was at Buddha's side constantly, attending to his every need for 42 years. When Buddha died, the story is told that Ananda was still at his side, weeping. The other disciples chastised him for his misunderstanding. Buddha had died absolutely fulfilled. He should be rejoicing. Uh, but Amanda, Ananda said, you misunderstand. I'm weeping not for him, but for myself, because for all these years I have been constantly at his side, but I have still not attained. Ananda stayed awake for the, the whole night, meditating deeply and feeling his pain and sorrow. By the morning, it is said that he was enlightened. Times of great sorrow have the potential to be times of great transformation. But in order for transformation to happen, we must go deep to the very roots of our pain and experience it and experience it as it is, without blame or self-pity. Um, so it feels to me like he's going through a dark night of the soul currently. And what's helping him through that, that um, detachment and pain is this idea of the love and the new beginning with the feminine in the future, which, you know, two unrelated um, ideas completely. But I feel like it's kind of giving him hope um, to make it through whatever, you know, is causing him this much sadness and pain. Okay, so near future for the feminine, shadow. So this is a moon card. So um, either this is a feminine energy or this is related to um, facing your shadow aspect, the unconscious mind, or just being in this state of not seeing things clearly, um, like there's going to be some form of illumination or truth being told. Seven of Swords. Magician, Six of Cups. So the Seven of Swords, um, you know, if we go back down to this energy here, we got that Eight of Swords, it's coming in the past. So there's this feeling of being locked out. Okay, so um, over here on the masculine side, we've got that feeling of detachment, locking out, but he holds that key to the door, to the freedom, to this new beginning. Um, and then in the future position, future past position <clears throat> for the feminine, we have a seven of swords. So um, again, it feels like this energy isn't completely resolved yet. It's lingering in the past. So the seven of swords represents not being able to trust anybody, looking over your shoulder to see if they're going to stab you in the back or um, as if you're being lied to, you know, not being told the entire truth. Very similar, like the moon, there's things that are hidden. So you're, you feel suspicious. The Magician card represents um, new beginnings, so it's a number one. So this means that you have the ability to change this perspective. Again, it's about creating the reality that you desire, um, using alchemy, you know, and using your connection to Source um, in order to transmute your reality, like I said, into whatever you desire. You have the power, you have the tools to to manifest this new beginning into your life. So um, there's a sense of coming out of 
you know, just partially being in the dark and partially being in this loving spiritual, um, you know, energy. So in the future, we have the Six of Cups. So this is reunion. This is somebody from your past coming back, somebody that you've known from childhood or past life, okay? So it's pure, innocent, childlike, innocent, um, you know, new be or not new beginning, sorry, but an older love coming back. So reunion. Um, so, like I said, you can manifest the reality that you desire, and it's a matter of perspective. Are you going to continue to look at the past um, and linger in that darkness, or are you going to use that power of uh, manifestation in order to um, manifest the, the, your union in the future? All right, so near future for the masculine, seven of sword, or sorry, seven of cups. Um, so you hear on the dock, you know, we have a masculine meditating. His hands are like so, and um, he's, you know, drawing uh, the sun's rays towards him, or you know, absorbing the sun's light, um, as well as source. He's connected, um, meditating basically. Okay, so. He's being given several choices, and they're all great choices, and he doesn't know which one to choose. So, you know, he desires to be free like the birds and soar above this emotional, um, you know, precipice, basically, this um, deep well of emotions. He knows he needs to um, go within and listen to his heart, and there he will find the answer. Um, so I believe that's what he will be doing. Tower. High Priest. And the King of Swords. So, um, the Tower card is in the past. So, something in the very near future is going to come in, if it hasn't already, and completely rock his world. Um, so, it's you know, news, it's an aha moment, it is, um, you know, um, a disruption, a major disruption, and it tears down your old world, your, um, your old life, so that a new life can be born of it, so he's in this uh, tower energy as we speak, and so that's what's causing that heartbreak and, um, you know, that sorrow. The high priest is right at the center. So among you know, while he's in the midst of all of this energy, he is still, you know, connected to source. Um, he's still being represented as this very wise, spiritual, um, enlightened masculine. So I connect this to the masculine in a spiritual form. So it's, you know, that 5D connection between the high priest and the high priestess. So they both showed up in the reading. So even though they're not together, you know, in the 3D, they are connected always in the 5D. So there's this definite connection. He's using not only his heart in order to show him the way out of this um, craziness, um, but he's, he's finding peace and stillness and clarity of mind while being in this meditative state. So this card also represents being a leader, a spiritual leader, using your wisdom and knowledge in order to guide others out of the darkness. The King of Swords could represent an air sign. So now we've got, you know, the Knight, the Queen, and the King of Swords. So a lot of air um, in this reading. <clears throat> so the King of Swords um, is someone who has mental clarity. Um, they are also a leader, but they're authoritative. Um, they tell you how to do it, when to do it, and um, they, you know, make a plan and execute that plan. Uh, this is also cutting away barriers and darkness. There's this um, this sense of security and sa safety around a masculine energy like this because, you know, you just you feel like you're being protected. And yeah, so this could mean communication, or it just 
could mean this ultimate clarity, mental clarity that arises from this reflection in this tower. So here the crown chakra is activated, uh, which is I know, it's the mind um, connected to source. And then here the king of swords is the, um, you know, it, at the pinnacle of achievement in terms of mental clarity. Um, he's completely detached from emotions, even more so than the Queen of Swords. So again, with that mental detachment, or, or sorry, that emotional detachment, over here we got that change in perspective, and again we have that energy of change in perspective, you know, seeing things from two different angles. Um, so again, I'm feeling a detachment of the masculine from the feminine. Um, and it may create some fear in the feminine. Um, but again, the message is to, you have the power to create the reality that you desire. So you can focus on the negative or focus on the positive. But just know that the masculine is going through another dark night of the soul. And this is all meant for him to awaken, to rise to higher levels of consciousness. It is all, you know, through pain, through the fire that we fully awaken. Okay, so final come for the feminine. Eight of Wands, Accelerate Emotion. This is my ultimate communication card. So this could mean a message coming in towards you, some form of communication, good news. This is reaching for the stars and having that energy come back. Um, so surrendering, you know, sending out those seeds of intention and then surrendering to you, or surrendering to it. And then, like I said, that energy coming back because of that surrender. Uh, this also means Cupid's arrows as well. So uh, love. Wow. Ace of Cups. Sun card. And Five of Cups. So the Ace of Cups um, is coming kind of in the past position. So like the, the near future past position is what I'm feeling. So with it's coming with this uh, Six of Cups is what I feel. So it's a brand new beginning of love. So again, Cupid's arrows coming towards you. Um, and again, this card only comes after a point when you've really done some healing. The Sun card, Best Major Arcana, so all the happy feels. This is a very positive card as well. It's enthusiasm, excitement. It's a um, massive influx of positive energy. <clears throat> and this is this card um, times a bajillion, right? So this is um, you know, a new beginning, a return to innocence, love, um, abundance, uh, reward, just everything that's awesome. However, in the future position, we have the Five of Cups. So this is mourning energy. It's, it's feeling a loss, a deep loss. Um, so again, we got that back and forth, light, dark, but now it's in reverse in the future. So it could be a warning. Do you know what I mean? Again, you, there might be that tendency to fall back into the state of sadness or what you could be picking up on is the deep sorrow that's coming from the masculine um, is, you know, being reflected in, in, in your energy in the future because you guys are mirrors and reflect, um, mirror reflections. So I'm going to pull um, a card from Osho Zen for that one as well. What do you mean by the Five of Cups spirit? Slowing down. The Knight of Pentacles. So maybe this love comes in very quickly. It excites you. But then it leaves just as quickly. And kind of leaves you disillusioned in a way. Um, let's read what it says. So Knight.
Okay. So it's a turtle. Hold it close for you guys to see. Okay. So it says, The Night of Rainbow is a reminder that, just like this tortoise, we carry our home with us wherever we go. There is no need to hurry, no need to seek shelter elsewhere. Even as we move into the depths of the emotional waters, we can remain self-contained and free from attachments. It is a time when you are ready to let go of any expectations you had about yourself or other people and to take responsibility for any illusions you might have been carrying. There is no need to do anything but rest in this fullness of who you are right now. If desires and hopes and dreams are fading away, so much the better. There is disappearance, sorry, this, their disappearance is making space for a new quality of stillness and acceptance of what is. And you are able to welcome this development in a way you have never been able to before. Savor this quality of slowing down, of, becoming, of coming to rest, and recognizing that you are already home. So that was pulled for the Five of Cups. Um, so there's that detachment. When I, when I give a description for this card, I always say that if you, you know, this card only shows up when you've attached yourself to something. You've had expectations, and when that thing leaves or doesn't work out the way that you thought it would, then you feel this sorrow, this deep sense of loss. And so that's definitely the message that I'm picking up um, in this card, you know, on the other hand, the Knight of Pentacles also represents slowing down um, and, you know, taking very calculated, slow steps towards attaining that goal. Um, it's the slowest night, but it is movement forward, okay? So maybe you desire things to speed up, and they do, and it excites you, but then it slows it down again, which causes this disconnect um, so what I'm feeling strongly is is the feminine um, needs to balance her energies um, like I said you're going from light to dark light to dark back and forth back and forth where the masculine um, actually is, is doing the same thing on a similar level you know he's sad but there's love in his heart um, you know, there's chaos around him, but yet he's connected spiritually. Same thing over here. So, yeah, there is mirroring again. So very scattered energy. Um, the most scattered reading I've had so far. So from this chaos, I see, you know, clarity coming most definitely. That is you know, the progression of what's happening. If you can surrender, move through um, that those lingering fears, then love will come in. But don't attach to it. Don't expect anything of it. Okay, so final outcome for the masculine, Eight of Swords, Trapped in Fear. So, same energy. So, final outcome, uh, main energy, is him feeling trapped, um, detached, alone, sad you know and again it's oppressive energy coming from the outside so he has the key to his freedom whether he uses it or not well let's see i guess five of swords solar plexus chakra and the wheel of fortune so the five of swords is um you know finger pointing it is a reason why he's in that mental prison to begin with you're not good enough you suck you're you're never going to amount to anything. Um, you did all of these things wrong. And so he's choosing to believe that, though. Um, but it's in the past position. So it's the energy that encaged him. However, as a final outcome, he's going to... His uh, solar plexus chakra is going to activate. So that's his strength, his power, his um, courage in order to break free of the, those constraints. And in the future position, we have the Wheel of Fortune. So this is karma coming back to him in a good way. And it's a completion and an ending of that negative cycle. Um, so it's a turn again. 
um, a change in energy as a final card. So that shift may, you know, cause a sense of disruption with the feminine. You are highly intuitive, so you are definitely picking up on the masculine's energy, no doubt about it. All of the, almost all the cards are intuitive. High Priestess, over here we have the Queen of Cups. Um, the Queen of, of Wands coupled with the Hangman, I, I feel a lot of intuition. You know, there's spirituality with, uh, this is Illumination, Crown Chakra Activation. And then we have the Moon with the Magician again, that's Crown Chakra Activation with Intuition, which is the Moon. Um, and then a lot of sun, okay? So you do make it through that darkness with the sun, but again, um, offer your love and support to the masculine um, in the 5D and 3D because it does feel to me like he's going through a difficult time, okay? So what is the feminine energy bringing into the union? Four of Pentacles, firm foundation. So grounding energy kind of reflected in this cluster of cards. Let's see what else. The Seven of Wands, Lover's card again, and wow, Heart Chakra. So Seven of Wands, um, this is kind of the past position, so it's coming into your power, your strength. You are lit up, you know, you're going to be lit up um, as the Queen of Wands in the future. So this is you feeling powerful, being able to express your, yourself, feeling that charismatic energy, but also not backing down. You know, it's kind of a defensive energy, but it's really a powerful, I know who I am and you can't tell me otherwise, right? So it's, this also represents being on the right spiritual path. The lover's card. So again, there's this deep loving connection uh, shared between the twins. This is desire, passion, um, and longing for that that connection. And your heart chakra will be activated in the future. So um, this is unconditional love um, that you know is activated with the you know twin flame connection that was activated in the past. That initial love. Um, so you are grounded, powerful and you know holding your your twin in your heart what is the masculine bringing in seven of swords again same card so you know here in both the cards they're looking over their shoulder away from the feminine um so you know maybe it's something in his environment that he can't trust so deception Okay, well, he's looking at the Divine Feminine here. Star card. And Judgment. So, um, the Divine Feminine um, Twin Flame, you know, it's almost like he's looking at her and questioning whether or not this connection is real or not. Um, or, again, there's a sense that he's going through a difficult time and he's thinking about her in order to help him move through this darkness because uh, we have the star card here so this is healing energy this comes after a very difficult period of time like the dark, dark night of the soul it also means wish granted and then the judgment <clears throat> sorry the judgment card I don't know why my voice is cracking up like that um, this is the grand awakening so he will realize something um, maybe realize how he's been acting or how he's been shutting her out or how much he loves her you know during this dark time like I said there's a sense of him reflecting about the connection um, which is helping him to heal and stay awake you know when you're in a lot of pain there's this there's you know you're caught up in the ego you're caught up in the unconscious mind um, and it's easy to get lost in that energy so I really feel either he is using this love in order to make it through a difficult period because there's a rebirth in his future 
um, or he's questioning whether or not this is a real connection. Okay, so foundation, high priest, so same card up here, activation in the future, so, um, you know, there's this sense of him becoming empowered, the solar pl plexus activation, um, and awakening energy, so, uh, either he, the masculine is becoming that leader or the feminine is also stepping into that leadership role. So we'll pull one card each, feminine first, king of pentacles, and the two of wands. Um, so the king of pentacles, we got the queen over here. So king and queen of the same court cards usually means, you know, the same suit means that it's a twin flame connection, but, you know, um, this could represent the feminine um, being independent on a massive scale, like having a lot of abundance in her life, um, feeling very grounded, and um, you're not not necessarily attached to the three D world, but very grounded in it, not seeking pleasure from it, but feeling a lot of abundance and success, or she could be desiring that connection with the masculine as well. <clears throat> it's almost like she's waiting for him to walk through that door. So the Two of Wands represents making a decision in the past, which he did with the Ace of Swords, to move towards his spiritual calling, live his higher spiritual calling. So that would be represented by the High Priest. So that's what he's doing. He's moving towards that in the future. So he made that decision um, and this is an expansion of the mind, so even though he's very, you know, sad, uh, feeling disconnected, there is this awareness lingering in the background that is reigniting that, um, you know, uh, spiritual energy within him. And it's almost like you're reflecting the masculine back to him, you know, with your groundedness, you're providing that grounded energy. The high priest is also earth energy too. Okay, so crowning, four swords. So here again we have a masculine meditating. So um, currently, you know, it's a shared energy. So both the feminine and the masculine have detached and are in this rested state. Um, so finding that mental clarity which I'm seeing here with the feminine, same thing with the masculine, with the king of swords. Um, and you're also doing a lot of work on healing your heart. There's a lot of green here. So love is on your mind and you're trying to figure out how to make this, you know, make this happen in the 3D. So there's stillness in, in the, you know, mental clarity. Uh, so feminine first, the hermit, and the three of wands so down here we have the two and the crowning we have a three uh, so the three of wands is starting to see the fruits of your labor so starting to feel successful about making that choice um, to follow your true authentic calling um, but there's still more work to do but you're getting a thumbs up for the spiritual growth this healing that you've done um, <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Yeah, keep going, guys. All right, so the Hermit card, this is a detachment. So, yeah, I'm feeling the feminine is trying to detach, not get involved, not get pulled in by the sadness. Um, but it's definitely affecting her energy level. Um, so Hermit, you are... You know, detached, and you are being represented as this wise, um, you know, spiritually enlightened soul. So this is someone who detaches from the material world, um, and is like a Buddha. You know, they have found their light within, and they're sharing their wisdom and knowledge with others, very much like the high priest. But this is, um, you know, more of a solitary kind of um, journey. A journey to discover not just yourself but um, live your life the way you desire it and 
um, not be influenced by the material world. So yeah, um, that is what I'm feeling. You know, that this desire to want to be with your twin and, and longing for that energy and then kind of pulling back again and trying to center yourself um, in the spiritual, you know, presence while the masculine, you know, tries to make it out of that dark state that he's in. Oops. Okay, so heart-centered energy. Nice. Nine of Cups. Fulfillment of wishes, guys. At the heart of the matter, you both love each other very deeply. Um, and you desire to be at that place where you can just be happy. You know, no more pain, no more fear, no more worrying, no more having to fulfill your soul purpose. No, nothing. Just laughing, enjoying yourself, and being happy. So this is what you are both feeling, you know, in, in, in your heart. Um, you both love each other. That's the most important thing. And Spirit is saying that wish is granted. Um, so recognize, okay? So at the bottom of the deck, wow, patience. So this is temperance card. This is the ultimate union card for me. Um, so it's the souls winding back together. You know, she also represents patience, which is planting those seeds of intentions, like I mentioned earlier, and nurturing it so that it can grow. But it also represents having balance in all areas of your life, emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. All right, so <clears throat> I feel that the fe uh, feminine and masculine are both trying to um, find balance for sure um, and just know that if you come to a point where you feel a great deal of sadness um, you know that energy may not be coming from anything that's happening in your life you may be feeling your twins energy so help transmute that change that sadness into love and send positive loving vibrations Okay, and you know, that's what I was picking up with this Five of Cups. Okay, perspective. All right, so I am also going to choose two cards from Myths and Mermaids for a message from the universe, and I will read those to you. Okay, feminine first, La Serena, and Microcosm Sea Monsters. Yes, that's exactly what I'm feeling with the masculine um, in a dark place. So, where's my book? Oh, boy. I'm just going to pause it for a moment. Okay, so La Serena. Oh, gosh show the card up close so you can see what it looks like all right so it says remember those who have come and passed loves that lingered but couldn't last questions raised but never asked lulls the enchanting mermaid song remember joys from long ago friends you now no longer know dreams you had no time to sow her words are tempting but ring wrong a captivating mermaid preparing for D Dia de lo Ro whatever so I don't know. Uh, Day of the Dead is decked out with tiny skulls and flowers. She is seductive and enchanting, singing a song that is alluring but dangerous. Do not get dizzy with the songs of the mermaid. Remember to honor loved ones and your past, but do not get swallowed up in the memories. Do not forget to live in the present and plan for the future, or you will be doomed to live in the shadow of others. Bear in mind, the past shines brighter in your memories than in reality ever could, uh, than reality ever can, sorry. Do not be deceived into falsely remembering what has come before. The saying, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence applies to time as well as space. Remain grounded in the present, not mirrored in the past or intoxicated with what could have been. 
a life lived fully in the present with a healthy reverence for the past and an optimistic eye on the future is the best is of the best balance do not let the mermaid of remembrance beguile you okay yeah that's exactly what i'm i'm seeing you being pulled back into this past energy but ultimately you are trying to find your balance and i believe that you are maintaining it uh, but this is definite confirmation that um that energy may not be yours it may be you know um, something that is affecting your energy field like the masculine like i said it's mirroring okay so number 35 oh wow 35 36 microcosm sea monster containment is essential she said with a nervous backward glance losing these beasties on the earth an unfortunate happenstance it requires my utmost resolve to keep these fiends bottled up inside to allow them freedom is this world to allow them freedom in this world i sim simply cannot abide a melancholy ugh, why can't i talk <clears throat> sorry a melancholy collie melancholy maiden clutches an alchemical flask Beside her sits her ultimate creation, a microcosmic world of swir swirling seas and raging monsters. She is uneasy, however, and expends all of her energy containing the world. The meaning. Be careful bottling up your inner demons. On the outside, you are calm, but inside you are hiding tumultuous emotions. You are wasting a great deal of energy keeping these incessant monsters contained. You're wasting your faculties trying to make everything appear okay on the surface when you are hurting internally. Resolve what is inside of you. Make peace with your past so that you can move forward with goodness and light in your heart. Make peace with your present self, even if it's not ideal. Know that it is within your power to make changes to yourself, but only slowly and with great effort. Take steps to change what you what you can and make peace with what you cannot when your interior finally reflects the ex exterior you will at last be ready to face the world and yeah, that's what i'm feeling you know there's this deep sadness inside and he faces that sadness and like i said releases himself okay um so yeah let me know if this resonates and i i guess i'm done Scott Whelan from Stone Temple Top Pilots. Um, I signed it, so <laughs> I guess it's done. So I got Kurt Cobain and then Chris Cornell over there. Oop. And yeah, so I love you guys. Let me know if this resonates. Much love.